Okay, so first off, I think a big part of the reason Kanye is catching so much backlash is because he's a prominent figure in the African-American community, and without the African-American vote, liberals won't win, and they know that. So Kanye is a massive threat to the Democratic Party, especially with the midterm elections coming up. Now, what's disturbing to me is that everything that Kanye proposed with the meeting with Trump, all of the points that he hit on would only unify the country and improve American lives, especially improve African-American lives. So you have a man who's willing to go against the expectation, expectation that a black man is only supposed to support Democrats. Also a man who is willing to go against the expectation that a Hollywood figure is only supposed to support a Democrat, who's going to reach out to our president, stand up against corporations, bring jobs back to America, address problems in the inner city, proposing a meeting between Kaepernick and Trump to try to unify our nation racially. Like everything that he's doing is to bring the nation together and to make America better. He even actually proposed changing the Make America Great Again hat to Make America Great because he doesn't think that there should be an again. He just thinks that America should be great. Now, everyone in the media is, there, there is an asinine amount of backlash and everyone's calling him crazy and saying that he's lost his shit. Why? Because he wants to do something good? Yeah, Kanye's an artist. He's super eccentric. When you listen to him talk, he is definitely, he may come off as a little flighty and a little bit of a space cadet, but all artists are that way. Like he, like he just, he is definitely a right brain thinker. So when you see him and you hear him talk and then you see people criticize him and call him, call him crazy for the ideas that he's having, but you write the ideas down on paper and his presentation might be a little, like I said, eccentric, but on paper, everything that he's saying makes so much sense. It's stupid. And it's, it really bothers me because eccentric does not equal insane. Just because someone is different from you, it doesn't mean that they're crazy. What is insane is people who are criticizing a man for trying to do something good just because it doesn't support their political ideology. Lincoln said that America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. Now, what I see happening with the way people are criticizing someone for trying to unify and better our nation, especially somebody, and I, like, I hate the fact that politicians, uh, sorry, I hate the fact that celebrities have so much power in this country, but they, they do. Like, we idolize them. Not me personally, but us as a nation. Look at the Kardashians. For some reason, we really do look up to and listen to celebrities. So yes, Kanye is in a position where should he be a political advisor to the president? No. Is he in a position of power where he has the capability to politically advise the president? Yes. Are his ideas good? Yes. Is what he's trying to do from the heart and to make things better for Americans? Yes then why are we tearing him apart? Because, oh, he doesn't conform to the Democrats. Like he doesn't, like he just doesn't go with the flow. He doesn't, he's not a zombie. He's not a robot. He's not a sheep, whatever you want to call it. He's thinking for himself. So we're going to, we're going to try and tear him down. I feel like we're better than that. Like <laughs> that's why artificial intelligence is going to take over. That's why the computers are going to own us. That's why our species is going to fail because we can't come together and we can't unify, even when you have somebody who, like, who is really pushing for that, who should be able to reach out to and speak to both, both sides of the spectrum. And like, if anybody could bring the country together, it would be a figure like Kanye. But why, we just won't let that happen. It's like, we don't want to. It's like, we are in love with conflict. It's like, we're that shitty girlfriend who always picks fights just to prove that her boyfriend loves her because he's going to chase her back after they, you know, it's like the person who fights to make up. I feel like that's what our country has become. It's like, we don't know another way. So we continue to nitpick and fight with each other rather than say, okay, 
maybe I should listen to your side. Okay, maybe we're both fighting for the same thing. Okay, what is best for the nation as a whole? How can we move forward? So much has changed and there's so much going on inside our society. Like there's so many things that, factors that just, we don't know how to handle. We don't know how to handle technology. We don't know how to handle social media. We don't know how to handle the communication that we have. I feel like we're in like an infancy stage of this technological boom and like that we've experienced over the past 20 years. And no, we don't know how to handle it, but we should be working together to try to figure things out from this point forward, especially with the communication and with the tools that we have given ourselves over the past two decades. So I'm going to insert the Kanye video. Please feel free to watch it and let me know your thoughts. Um, I really do hope that things like this continue to happen. I hope the meeting with Kaepernick and Trump happens. I hope that the country can come together because I don't like us being divided this way. I don't want to see people on Facebook fighting and having resentment and spite towards each other where otherwise, you know, we have tons in common and we would get along and everything would be just fine. I've lost too many really good friends over politics. And I don't want that trend to continue in the future. And honestly, with the communication that we have and the heart that we have in this country, I feel like that should never be a thing. So hopefully, moving forward, we can all be adults, learn how to be the bigger person, admit when we're wrong, express our opinion tastefully when we're right, and move on and make this a better world for everyone, not just in America, but all across the globe. Breaking news, rapper Kanye West in the Oval Office. Watch. The entire country and give opportunities. A lot of times, it's just the overall lack of reparations that we, at any given point, we say, oh, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist. So we don't have the reparations, but we have the 13th Amendment. We got to open up the whole conversation. So, and uh, that's a move, one of the moves that I love that liberals tried to do, the liberal would try to control a black person through the concept of racism because they know that we are very proud, emotional people. So when I said I like Trump to like someone that's liberal, they'll say, oh, but he's racist. You think racism can control me? Oh, that don't stop me. That's an invisible wall. Mr. West, what would you like? Oh, your question. You, you have one question. We're going to go to another question. Okay. I Mr. answered West. your question. I don't answer questions in simple sound, sound bites. You, you are tasting a fine wine. It has multiple notes to it. You better play 4D chess with me like it's Minority Report. Because it ain't that simple. It's Mr. complex. Mr. West, what would you like? I'm from the Chicago Sun Times, so I would like to know what you would like to ask President Trump to do for Chicago. You're here to talk about crime in Chicago. The, the thing that. Um, that the uh, head of the police and um, Mike Sachs met with me last night at the Soho House about was we feel that stop and frisk uh, does not help the relationships in the city. And everyone that knew I was coming here said, ask about stop and frisk. That's, that's, that's uh, the number one thing that we're uh, having this conversation about. Uh, another thing is opening up industries, and we've got to get some tax breaks to, because you no, know, we're making um, we got a speed factory in Atlanta, but the shoes are costing us three hundred dollars, so it's costing us too too much to make things. So we need some prototypes here, so we can get people back working. So China can't just beat us, and Vietnam can't beat us. You got Levi's, the greatest jeans company in the world, making their jeans in uh, in Vietnam. So we're going to need to get a few breaks to be able to have some places in my hometown of Chicago, and the two point seven million to the nine million surrounding suburbs, where we can create some factories. Now, I think it would be cool for them to be Trump factories because he's a master of industry. He's a builder. And I think it would be cool to have Yeezy ideation centers, which would be a mix of education that empowers people and gives them modern information. Like, sometimes people say, this kid has ADD, this kid has ADD. He don't have ADD. School is boring. It was boring. It's not as exciting as this. We have to make it more. He don't have ADD. School is boring. It was boring. It's not as exciting as this. We have to make it more exciting. We have to mix curriculums. You play basketball while you're doing math. You, you, you learn about music while you meditate in the morning. We have to instate mental health and art programs. Uh, back into the uh, back to the city. So those are 
Uh, and also, Larry Hoover is an example of a man that was turning his life around. And as soon as he tried to turn his life around, they hit him with six life sentences. So I believe he's, with, you say don't tear down the statues? Larry Hoover is a living statue. He's a beacon for us that needs to see his family, that needs to go out and represent. When you have a block leader on every single block, they can own the block as their own. That's something I learned from Jim Brown from A Mayor I Can. We need to put curriculums from people who really came from the streets, not people who are just trying to set us up to go into a work system or prison system that applies to what people are really going through, which Jim Brown has created. What about gun violence with all the debate about the Second Amendment going on? The problem is illegal guns. Illegal guns is the problem. Not, not, not legal guns. We have the right to bear arms. President Trump has said that he favors stop and frisk. Are you guys going to be discussing that? Do you think you can change his mind? Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to discuss I didn't mean to put you no, on no, glass no. like that, bro. But it's definitely. Hey, I'm uh, open minded. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. President, I am open minded. I'm going to speak at one of your rallies. He can speak for me anytime he wants. He's been a great guy. He's a smart cookie. Yeah. Smart. He gets it. Yeah. These two guys, Jim Brown, he's been doing this for a long time. Is this a future presidential candidate? Uh, could very well be. Oh, only after. Could that. very well be. Before. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. We, we, we have a good. And the thing is, let's stop worrying about the future. All we really have is today. We just have today, over and over and over again, the eternal return, the hero's journey. And Trump is on his hero's journey. But best believe, we are going to make America great. Now, the thing is, my, another thing is black people have an issue with the word again. And I believe my feeling from that is because I'm going to throw it. I'm going to go all the way, Sigmund, with it, because time is a myth. All we have is now. All we have is today. So the word, again, it doesn't hurt us because of the idea of racism and say read a different thing. It, it, it hurts us because we need to focus on who we are now, today, I, I believe. So I actually brought some hats in that have a bit of a transition. I'm not, not trying to put you up there a spot a little bit. I, I made a hat uh, that says, Make America Great. Just that. But I would love to see. At the Super Bowl, Trump wearing the Make America Great hat, Colin making, wearing the Make America Great, and showing that we can bend a bit on this side, we can bend a bit on this side, and we can learn how to be malleable in the infinite universe that we are and the loving beings that we are, that we don't have to stick to all traditions. And, and we are a side. We are one unit. We are one country. We are one moment in history and time. We might have been here before, but right now, we're here together. And the greatest value that people have are other people. And we need to stop working on red and blue. It's like a gang again. Let me ask you this question. You're in the Oval Office. Okay. How does it feel to be in the Oval Office? Oh, it is good energy in this. Isn't it good energy? Yeah. It's good energy. It's a great place. Jim, how do you feel? I feel good. Yeah. yeah. I truly feel good. Yeah. Thank you, too. You're so respected. And what Kanye is doing has been incredible. All over the world, they're talking about this. And I have to tell you, I had important meetings today with senators and with everything. Nobody cared. They wanted this meeting. This is the meeting. Is that right? I can say that to John. Uh, no, the others were good, right? But this is what they want. you would be here. Well, it's my honor, Jim. I want to tell you, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. A long time. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. No athlete like you. Well, you know why I'm here? I'm here to serve. Yeah, it's really nice, man. I'm not here to ask anything. Well. And, you know, that's always been the way Jim has been for a long time. And he just wanted to help. And it's, it's something special. Jennifer, did you have a question? Um, I guess, just do you, what do you feel about Tom Frisk? Are you going to? Well, we're going to look at yeah. it. I'm, I'm open to everything. Hey, look, I think it's a shame what's happening in Chicago. And what else can be done? I'm in Chicago a lot, too. I have nice things in Chicago. You know that, right? And I hate to see what's happening. They're having numbers, the numbers of people being shot and killed, and it's, it's not, it's not for this country. So they have to do something, and I am totally open. If we can do it a different way, Kanye, I'm totally open. But they have to do, I mean, we all agree they have to do something. That's Mr. for President, sure. is it a law enforcement issue, a legislation? Well, maybe it's a combination of both. I, yeah, I guess it is, but I think it's probably a combination of both. 
And it's also a respect issue. They respect this guy. They respect this guy. That's a big thing. Right now, they're not respecting, let's say, your mayor or let's say your leadership in Chicago. But certainly, it shouldn't be happening. What's going on there should not be happening. Steve, go ahead. What, what do you want this meeting to lead to in terms of uh, Honestly, from our standpoint, this was just set up to be a lunch of two people that I like. And I guess they like me. And we're going to have lunch. We're going to talk. You said, you said, I guess you know I love you. I know. Did, did I, did but I, I don't want to take, I don't want to put you in that spot. But. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm standing in that spot. I love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. That's really nice. Yeah. Come here. Yes. Yeah. That's really nice. And that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position. But, but that's from the heart. Special guy. These two are special people. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, they're special people. And I appreciate it. Jim, Kanye, I appreciate it. So let's go have some lunch. Okay? Thank you all very much. Sorry, that was really God, let's go. Make your way out. Thank you all.